Welcome to Tutorial 10. With many of the dynamic models used in GPSX, most of the parameters are assumed to be constant over the entire calibration period. For example, the clarifier's flocculent zone settling parameter is normally set to one specific value for the entire simulation. One reason for doing so is that it is difficult to measure online, so the best a modeler can do is assume that the parameter doesn't change over the simulation period and use only one value to fit the data. A more rigorous approach, however, might be to try to fit the measured data by varying the parameter over the simulation period. This approach has two advantages, a better agreement between the model and the data, and an indicator of the dynamic response of the parameter. However, this technique makes the assumption that the measured data is relatively error-free. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to set up and run the Dynamic Parameter Estimator, or DPE. The GPSX Advanced Tool Module is required to complete this tutorial. First, we'll need a layout for this tutorial. Open Layout 10 Real Plant from the GPSX Layouts directory. This is found in the Install directory of GPSX under the folder Layouts. Once the file is open, click on the modeling button. For what we want to do in this tutorial, we need to make some modifications. Delete everything downstream of the flow combiner after the primary clarifier. The layout should now look like this. Now that we've got all this open space, let's resize the layout a little. Use Save As to save your own copy of 10 Real Plant in any directory you'd like. Once you've saved your copy of the layout, we're going to need to copy and paste some of the data files from the original directory. Select all of the data files associated with 10 Real Plant and copy and paste them to the directory where you saved your layout. and compile the code by clicking on the simulation button. OK, now that the model is compiled, let's set up our input controls and output graphs. Remove the primary effluent ammonia variable from the primary effluent NH3 and TSS graph. This can be done by right-clicking on the variable and removing it. To clean things up, Delete all output graphs that do not pertain to the influent flow, composition, and primary effluent. These are the graphs that no longer have any variables. Open the Output Graph Properties form and change the max value for the primary effluent suspended solids from 1000 to 300 grams per meter cubed. Remember to accept the changes. Rename the graph to reflect that it no longer has the ammonia variable. Now that we've got the output graph set up, let's remove all of the input control tabs that don't pertain to the influent flow composition, or primary effluent. These are the tabs that no longer have input controls. With our inputs arranged and our graphs ready, select the Calibration Scenario from the Scenarios menu on the Simulation Control toolbar, and run a four-day steady-state simulation. When the simulation completes, you'll notice that the primary effluent, TSS, shows a reasonable fit with the real measured data but that there is considerable room for improvement. At this point, it is desirable to improve the fit between the primary effluent TSS and the data by optimizing the flocculent zone settling parameters as it varies with time. So let's set up the dynamic parameter estimator. Click on the modeling button, and under the optimize drop-down menu, select type, DPE mode. With the DPE selected, Click on the Optimize icon to switch from Edit to Optimize mode. Remember, 
The mode you are in can be found on the status bar at the bottom of the GPSX window. Now that we are in optimized mode, specify the primary effluent TSS concentration as the target variable for the optimization. To do this, right click on the upper connection point on the combiner and select Composite Variables from the Target Variables menu. Select Total Suspended Solids and accept the changes. You should take note that just like in Tutorial 8, when in Optimize mode, the menu item labeled Output Variables has become Target Variable. OK. With our Target Variable selected, turn off Optimize mode so we don't forget to later. Next, we need to set the Dynamic Parameter Estimator's Time Window and Tolerance. Under Options, General Data, System, Input Parameters, Optimizer, set a time window of 0.4 days and the parameter tolerance to 0.001. Save and recompile the model. With the model compiled, place the Flocculent Zone Settling Parameter, which is found in the primary tank, on the Input Control tab. Right-click and select Input Parameters, Settling. Click on the Input Control Properties button and set the range from 0.0001 to 0.005 and set the type of control to optimize. With the optimized control set up, save the model and recompile it. Click on Modeling, Tools, Build to recompile the simulation. Place the DPE time window found under Options, General Data, System, Input Parameters, Optimizer, on the Pump Controls Input Control tab. In the Input Control Properties, set the DPE Time Window Minimum to 0, Maximum to 4, and Control Type to Slider. Click on the Overflow Stream of the Primary Clarifier and select Output Variables, Input Parameters, Settling and place the Flocculent Zone Settling parameter on its own Output Graph tab. In the Output Graph properties, set the range from 0.0001 to 0.003. Rename the graph to PE Settling parameter. And adjust its size. Now that we've got everything set up, Select the Calibration Scenario and check Steady State on the Simulation Control Toolbar. We need to turn the DPE Optimize mode on again, so select Optimize, Type, DPE and click the Optimize button to turn Optimize mode on. Set the simulation time to 4 days and run the simulation. Try rerunning the simulation using different window sizes and convergence criteria. You can set the convergence criteria by clicking Options, General Data, System, Input Parameters, Optimizer. And that's it. That's the basics of using GPSX's Dynamic Parameter Estimator. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as CapDetWorks for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.